This is the world's longest and deepest tunnel. Look at it, it's absolutely massive. It runs under the Swiss Alps and is 57 kilometers long and reaches a depth of 2300 meters. It's used for trains that hit speeds of up to 250 kilometers an hour in a tunnel that, let's not forget, two kilometers under the surface, making this a true engineering marvel. But if you look at a map of railway lines in Switzerland, you'll see that there are multiple tunnels like this one across the country. And this is because the Swiss have conquered the mountains and exploited them in ways no other country has managed to do. And as a result, the country has developed a crazy transportation infrastructure that is to say it might mind-numbingly efficient. Just take a look at its motorways. With a total length of almost 1900 kilometers, its network of national highways is very dense, among the densest in Europe in fact. Because despite the rough mountainous terrain, Switzerland still manages to have one of the best road networks in the world, ranking third in road infrastructure quality. Even crazier though is the country's railway network that you just had a sneak peek of with the world's longest and deepest tunnel, as it too is one of the densest railway networks in the world, despite the mountains. On top of that, it is arguably one of the best rail networks as well, having been ranked as the best in Europe in the 2017 Railway Performance Index, and the third most efficient in the world according to the Global Competitiveness Report. Couple this with a very high punctuality as 89.5% of the trains reach that destination within 3 minutes of scheduled arrival and you get a super efficient railway network. But the lengths the Swiss will go to in order to develop their incredible infrastructure doesn't stop at digging tunnels and building extensive road and railway networks. And to understand what I mean by this, just look at this map. This is a map of Switzerland's hydropower plants, and these dots represent the location of them. Hydropower plants are used to harness the power of water to produce electricity, and it turns out Switzerland has a lot of these plants, and there's a very specific reason for that. You see, Switzerland is a country that doesn't really have any reserves of fossil fuels, therefore they had to get a bit more creative with their energy generation methods. So they did what they knew best, they turned to their mountains and started exploiting them in genius ways. This time to use the huge water reservoirs hidden in the mountains to their advantage. It's genius, because when you have an elevated body of water, there is a ton of potential energy to tap into. And to do that, you simply make the water flow downwards towards turbines that generate electricity using the power of gravity. This is why Switzerland has 682 hydropower plants today which at first might not sound like a lot if you compare it with other European countries like Germany that has over 7,000. But the thing is that these plants are responsible for supplying 31% of Switzerland's energy consumption, which is much higher than the EU average of around 5.5%. But the most impressive thing about Switzerland's energy generation methods is that most of their energy comes from renewable sources, something that's made possible not only by their hydropower plants but also the four nuclear reactors they currently have online that provide 20% of the country's energy needs. This is almost double the EU average of 11%, and unlike Germany, Switzerland plans to keep these running instead of shutting them down for no reason. And the result of this is a grid that is very reliable, as opposed to being highly dependent on the sun to shine or the wind to blow, which is the reality for some other European nations. But going back to their mountains, have you ever wondered what they might be hiding in them? Well, very expensive paintings, of course. And there is a very specific reason for that. See, in normal times, one could invest in alternatives like real estate or bonds for diversification. However, with a housing bubble approaching and bonds anticipating negative yields, those options are starting to look a lot less attractive, especially as inflation shows no signs of slowing down. And that's why I'm excited to introduce you to one asset that's been quietly added to the portfolios of billionaires for generations. It's blue chip art. These paintings aren't just for show though, they are investments. Contemporary art prices outpaced the S&P 500's total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021. The total wealth held in art is estimated to be worth 1.7 trillion and is projected to grow 900 billion by 2026 and for the first time in history, investors like you and I can get access to this asset class, thanks to our sponsor, Masterworks. 
Masterworks is the only platform taking billionaire art collectors head on and allowing people like us to invest in the very same art that they do. The platform allows you to invest in fractions of iconic artwork worth millions, including from the likes of Banksy and Picasso, who happens to be favorites of mine. Getting started with Masterworks is super easy. It takes a few clicks. Go to their website, create an account, browse some incredible artwork and diversify your portfolio with these new assets. So go to the link in the description and sign up today. Thanks again to Masterworks for sponsoring this video. Alright, so how come Switzerland has such amazing infrastructure and a genius utilization of the landscape when other similar nations don't? Well, it all has to do with Switzerland being imbued with a culture of practicality and problem solving from an early age. You see, much like Germany and the Nordic countries, vocational training is deeply entrenched in the Swiss culture. What this means is that as part of their education, the students from an early age assume responsibilities and are faced with practical problems in a work environment. Environment. This is part of the reason why the Swiss vocational training system is widely regarded as one of the best in the world. And as a result, there is a relatively low youth unemployment rate and a large pool of a specialized workforce ready to get its hands dirty with real world problems. But it's not only the educational system that is contributing to the country's efficiency, it's also politics. And no, by politics I don't mean it's international politics and the country's insane neutrality status, on which I've already made a video. I mean the institutions that regulate the interior life of the country. You see, Switzerland has a tradition of direct democracy implemented through its people voting in referendums. And when I say referendums, I mean a lot of referendums, which is a good thing because it allows the citizens to have a direct say on aspects of big projects. This in turn increases public support and transparency for these projects as it creates a culture of continuous and meticulous checks on their progress. This way you get textbook examples of well-managed projects. Combine this with a high trust in the institutions undertaking those projects and you have some of the factors explaining why Switzerland is so good at developing its infrastructure. Now, I should probably mention that for a period of time this infrastructure was rigged with explosives, which included the tunnel I mentioned in the beginning of the video, you know, the longest and deepest tunnel in the world. And I know it might sound pretty insane, and at its peak, the Swiss defensive network involved roughly 2,000 separate structures fitted with explosives. They put them in every single part of their infrastructure. Bridges, tunnels, roads, airstrips, and so on. It was a pretty wild time for Switzerland. But don't worry, the Swiss promised they've taken those out a long time ago. So all is good now. I think at least. But anyway, it should be clear that what could ostensibly have been a huge obstacle for the development of the country, you know, the extremely mountainous terrain, the Swiss have somehow managed to turn it into one of its biggest strengths. They leverage its benefits and downsize the costs of their country's morphology in the best way possible. Now, keep in mind that what I've shown you are just some examples of Switzerland's incredible efficiency. The list could go on and on from the country's incredibly designed cities to its highly innovative economy. But the point is, as I said in the beginning, that the Swiss are good at building things and they have managed to create a well-coordinated system that promotes problem solving and efficiency. As a result of this, their infrastructure is arguably one of the best in the world. But that's it for this video, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.